Hi, I'm Dr. Bertice Berry, and I want to tell you a story. The truth is, I don't want to tell this story, but it's important that I tell you. When I was about five, um, my brother is a year older than me, and he and I were um, decided that we were going to do this thing to help my mother out. Now, if my brother Kevin tells this story, it's all reversed. I did everything, and he was just an innocent bystander. Anyway, we heard my mother say that we used toilet paper like it was water, and that she was spending so much money on toilet paper because we used so much. And we were, like, discussing this and thinking, adults are so stupid, we can wash the toilet paper. So we decided to experiment with washing some toilet paper. It was clean and we just pulled it off the roll. My mother had a ringer washing machine and she loved to do laundry. That was like her hobby. It was down in the basement and we waited until she was upstairs and she couldn't hear us. We snuck down and we took some toilet paper. And the interesting thing was in this house there was a toilet downstairs in the basement and the basement wasn't finished or anything and I never knew why, why that toilet was there and then I found out years later the toilets were in the basement for the housekeepers who came because you weren't to use the toilet in the main house which is so fascinating anyway so we're in this basement we pull some toilet paper off the roll and we put it in the ringer and of course it gets stuck and my brother looks at me and he says, if you don't get it out, I'm going to tell mom you put it in there. Now, if he tells the story, he'll say that I just decided to get it out. But I was afraid and he was afraid. So I put my hand in and it kept going and it got caught and it was breaking. You could hear it crushing and breaking. And this is a slight scar and this was ripped away and it kept going all the way up and it crushed my entire arm. And we were so paralyzed with fear and the scar. People often think it's a burn, but it's actually from that, from that injury. And it just crushed my whole arm. And we were so afraid of what my mother would say, because this was her beloved washing machine, that we were just, like, I was holding in my fear. And my brother was holding in his fear. And finally, he started yelling, Mom! My mother came running down. And she wrestled with that washing machine and pulled me out. And I can remember her holding me and rocking me. And I can remember her saying to me, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And I was kind of like just paralyzed in fear. She's like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And my aunt came over and drove us to the emergency room. And um, they looked at it. And it was a, really a bloody mess. It was ripped and just a mess the water I remember the water just being red with blood and they decided that they were going to have to keep me in the hospital and that's when I began to cry I began to cry because I didn't want to be pulled away from my family I didn't want to be pulled away from home and I didn't know these strange faces and all these people and who were they and what were they going to do to me I remember going into the x-ray machine and for years I was afraid of x-rays and I didn't know why and, and I thought that it was going to crush my arm because the arm no longer worked. I remember my grandmother had a boyfriend who was a double amputee. And I said, what happened to his legs? And they said they didn't work, so they took him off. So here I am in my child mind seeing this big x-ray machine. And I'm thinking they're going to take my arm off because it no longer works. And I said that to the nurse. And they said, no, we're just going to take a picture of it. And they took the picture. And then she said, we have to get another picture. And I said, no, that was the test. And now you're going to take my arm. And they just kind of laughed. And they wrapped it and bandaged it. And they said they were going to have to keep me um and they were going to have to care for me until they could do the surgery that needed to be done to put a rod in it. Um, and I remember how much fear I had in those first days. And then I got puppets and people came in to play and people came to visit me and I got treats. And suddenly this new land was not so frightening and it was really worrisome, but suddenly it became kind of joyful. And I remember when it was time for me to have surgery, they wheeled me in and I was a little bit out of it. And I can still hear the sound of that nurse patting that arm. And she looked me in the face and said, look at that, it's healed. 
I've known since then that anything can heal any situation, anything that's broken. Sometimes I forget. And right now, we all feel like we've been put through a ringer. We're in a land of strange people and things and conversations and what are we going to do? And we're going to have to find a way to move through the strange and the new. Find a way to find some peace where we are. Peace with wearing a mask. Peace with isolation. Peace with coming to know and understand systemic racism. Once we get through the discomfort and the newness and the awareness that things have to change, they have to mend, they have been broken. But we can heal. I love you.